Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of work in response to the artist Morin Brodbeck. And you'll see in Photopia, I have opened up a photo that I took up in London of Nelson's column. And we're going to create a shell over Nelson's column. First thing I need to do is separate the foreground from the background. So I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool zoom in a bit more so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to start over on the left hand side and work my way round the various objects that are in the front of the image in front of Nelson's column okay so this takes the most time I would say out of everything making sure that you're going around the objects carefully I'm obviously going much quicker than I think is wise for the sake of the tutorial. Um, I would advise you take care and time over this particular bit. Because as I say, this is the, uh, the bit that takes the longest. And it's probably the hardest bit, to be honest with you. So around all your objects, making sure that you are being nice and careful, nice and neat with everything getting well cut out. Okay, then across the top of the bus I'm going and then down the side of the bus. There are some things that you might want to just use artistic judgment on. For instance, the wing mirror of the bus and the top right hand corner of the bus. So I, uh, I've chopped it off because it's going to be hidden by the shell, so I don't really need it. Okay, and then I'm going to go over these people's heads and then up and around the traffic light. And back down again. Then up and over the other lion statue and around these traffic lights. And from here I can cut right over because I know that the piece that I'm putting in isn't gonna go over to there. Then I'm gonna go down and around and up again to meet the original point. And when I zoom out, you might just be able to see the mask around all of those objects in the foreground. Now I'm going to press Control C to copy those and Control V and that's pasted those things in as a new layer and if I get rid of the visibility on the background layer you can see the difference okay. So I'm left with a foreground and a background and now I'm going to go to the pen tool and I'm going to make a point down the bottom and a point in the middle at the top and I'm going to click and drag to make that line curved and then go down the bottom again and click again and that's going to make that line continue round and down and then I'm going to do one more point back at the original and again stretch so that the shape goes down a little bit and then I'm going to go to the colour and just change it from white to a nice baby pink and I'm going to leave the stroke empty. Then I'm going to go over to the layer and go rasterize so it turns it from a live shape into just a shape. And I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to go to inner shadow. And I've already got the settings I want, but you'll need to play with the various settings, making sure you're on normal and that you've got a kind of hot pinky red color. Um, you'll need to make sure global is turned off that you've got the right angle and that your size and distance are right up and you click OK and that's got you a nice shadow over one side and we'll drag that down to below our front layer and you can see it in position okay I also want to put a little bit of an inner glow there so again I've already got the settings I want but it, you'll need to play with again making sure it's normal bringing the opacity down to middle keeping the same color 
and then making sure the spread's right down and the size is right up so you've got just a bit of glow on the other side. Then you click OK and that is all the shadow you need but we need a highlight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the shape tool and grab the ellipse shape and I'm going to draw, having zoomed out a bit, a very light pink something like that click OK no stroke again very light pink ellipse going down and then I'm going to use the arrow tool just to move that and rotate it just so it's in a position that I want it to be in and I'm going to as I did with the other shape right click on its layer and rasterize it and then this time I'm going to go to Filter and Blur and Gaussian Blur and that is going to blur the shape and I'm just going to bring it up, it looks quite good, let's see if a little bit more will help, no I think a bit less, okay and that will just blur it so it looks like it's a highlight. And I'm just going to bring it up a bit more, maybe rotate it a bit more. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And there you have it. This piece is done and dusted. And there it is. Okay, um, I hope you find this tutorial helpful.